So on your way up the sprayer, we've got our manual, or we've got a battery sh disconnect right here, which is now off and on. Every time you get out of the sprayer when you're parking it, make sure you turn it off. It's in a convenient location so you can remember to turn it on. Okay, so then we walk up to the sprayer to go into the cab. On the way to the cab, we have our diesel exhaust uh, fluid fill right here. And right beside here, we have our diesel tank fill as well. So also, before you get into the cab, we've got this nice uh, hand wash kit here. It is black so that in the summertime, the water will actually stay nice and warm so you don't have a cold rinse. Also, when you're moving into your shed, these beacons with the adjustment of this screw here will actually fold down so that you, this is not your highest point anymore. At that point in time, that uh, breather tube on the top of the tank will be your highest point. So inside the cab is the main controls, as you can see. Um, this monitor here that's still powering up is actually just for spraying and steering. So this is our IntelliV4, New Holland IntelliV4 monitor. And all it's going to um, display for you is your spraying systems and your, and your steering or your GPS. Um, so staying with this monitor, as you can see, what we've got running in the background through ISOBUS is a, a Raven display. And here we can tell right now there's 200 gallons of water in the tank. We're not running anything right now, so we have zero rate, but our target rate is five gallons per acre. And we have zero pressure, but our target pressure is, is 30. It's also set at automatic. We push that button, we can go to 10 or sorry, manual, where at this point in time, you have to preset your pump um, PWM, so pulse width modulation on your pump, and your nozzle P PWM. Go back to automatic so that it does all that stuff for us. If we want to change our rate, also on the side here, you'll see 5 gallon and 10 gallon. So these are preset rates that have been put in by the previous operator. So all you have to do is just push the button to jump from 5 gallons per acre to 10 gallons per acre. Notice on the dial here, that green uh, marker moves from five to 10. So that's, if it's in the green, it's within the range that it can spray at without having any fault codes. If we wanna change our rate, we just push the rate, push the rate window. Push the rate window, it's gonna pop up uh, a, a keypad and you're gonna change it to say, let's go with, uh, 66 is too much. We'll go to six gallons per acre now. We've changed it now. You've noticed that the green marker has moved up and now our target rate is six. If we want to change the pressure, it's the same thing. Hold down the pressure button. That'll pop up. We're going to change it to 60 PSI. Enter. Now our target rate is 60 PSI. One other thing that we need to do, or you, we'll go through this, the systems, the systems, system settings. Here you could set in a self-test speed if you needed to, to do a blowout or whatever you might wanna do. Other thing you can do is also go back into manual mode and just bump this PWM up to say 50. And your nozzle PWM up to 50. And you could spray it stationary that way because you're on manual now. So going back to automatic, Check, they go into check. settings, user Audio settings. Check, check, Basically, check. you're gonna, you're not gonna go through any of this information. Tank fill settings. Again, it's a 1,200 gallons or maximum tank. Right now, we've got 200 in here, and our, our low tank limit's gonna go off at 100. You can adjust this, and you can adjust this as well if you want to. Maybe you only want to put 1,000 gallons of water into the tank instead of uh, 1,200 gallons. We'll put it back to 1,200. These are uh, the fill flow meter that I talked to you earlier about, the 200 gallon per minute flow meter. It's got a cal number of 480, do not touch that. Uh, maximum tank fill PWM is 75%, don't touch that either. Alarm settings, it's going to tell us when we're off pressure. You can adjust these values if you need to, um, but we find that our factory presets seem to work well. Preset settings. Also, you can go in here and change your preset settings on your rate to, again, 6 if we so desire. This one, let's change it to 12. 
enter, as well as pressures. You see we've got 30 and 60 PSI in there. Our delta means what is that going to gain if we did a bump up? Same with pressure. If we do a bump up there, you can see here where there's a plus and a minus. That's where our delta gain, our, our rate and our pressure gains are. Our product control, we know we have a, a PWM valve. We know our maximum and minimums are 10% and 85%. Try not to adjust any of the, the settings in here. Pressure settings, response, minimum. Again, don't, uh, don't adjust any of those. So here, nozzle control valve, this is where you're going to change your nozzle tip when you need to put a different nozzle tip on. So as you can see right now, it's set up for an 04, which is red in color, but we're gonna spray 10 gallons per minute this time. So we're gonna need to put a different, uh, a different nozzle tip in there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna click on that. It's now going to show me all the different nozzle tips that I can choose from. This is now gonna show me all the different nozzle tips that I can choose from. 28%, 32% if I wanna spray some nitrogen. Here's uh, all the different tips, O2s, 025, 015, 03, 04. So again, we were gonna choose an 08 to spray our 12 gallon product. Now I've got the proper tip in there, so now the computer knows that the, the, the exit orifice on this tip is bigger, so it's going to adjust everything appropriately through in the uh, PWM. Now, if you're gonna go set up your farm information, this where you put your grower. We're gonna put in a new name of, it's gonna be a simple one, test. That's enter. Farm is gonna be a new farm. Um, new farm. Field. New field. Uh, it's gonna be number one. Now I've got a new task set in there, new task. So now I can set up a new AB line and a boundary. We might change a crop. Crop obviously doesn't matter except for um, records, but we can, we can select all of these different crops in here. Uh, we're gonna stay with what's in there, which is spring wheat. And we're obviously our operation is spray. Operation instance is if you wanna keep your same lines, but you want to delete the paint or the spray job. So you'll go in to hit a new operation instance, and then it'll clear. This would show where we painted or where we sprayed. It'll clear all that paint out, and our AB lines would be showing if we were running this machine. So once you've set your, uh, your farm information up there, you can go to your GPS, check out the heading that you want, whether it's straight or heading. Uh, if we took heading, we can mark our A, and then we can hit a latitude in there to end it. Um, let's go back to straight though. I'm just gonna mark your A and then when you get to the appropriate part, it'll ask you to mark your B. So then you have your A, B line set up. This is our actual real-time map. If we were driving, it would show us everything that we've covered through here in a lot narrower position than this map does. Status, just telling us where our satellites are. Obviously we don't have a, a satellite connection inside this building right now. Run six isn't set up for anything. Um, it probably would be um, for the rear camera, but the rear camera actually shows up in the chassis monitor, not in this monitor. So we'll just go back to the run screens. We'll leave that in spray mode, and then we'll start looking at the chassis monitor. So the heart of this sprayer is within this chassis monitor itself here. Um, uh, we'll go back to the main home screen. This is where we adjust our climate control, so our air conditioning and our heater. We can turn our product pump on from here, or we could turn our product pump on from this switch right here. There's a product pump switch on here, or this product pump switch here. This will show us the rear view camera. You can see if anybody's behind us. And you can see, sorry, going back to the camera, you can see where you can turn the auto reversing on or off. So it's off right now and it's on right now. So as soon as I go into reverse, the camera sure. will automatically pop up on this monitor. Sure. Back to the home screen. If you wanted to yeah. adjust your tread width manually, then you would go into this monitor. If you want to address it, adjust it to a point where you put in the width that you want it at, you simply go into this screen 
and you'll just push on here as to what width you want. I won't adjust it right now. We're sitting in a stationary position. You need to be with the park brake off in order to adjust it and moving one and a half miles an hour. That'll bring your width in while the sprayer is moving. So our hydraulics, all this is going to show us is our, our temperatures, our pressures, let us know that everything is normal and what our pressures are. So that's where we would, uh, we would look at our hydraulic, um, all of our hydraulic functions. Electrical, similar to the hydraulic one, right now you can see we're running at 13.3 volts. Other thing I forgot to mention in electrical, if you want to see your fuse panels, you just push this button here, it'll show you every fuse that's having an issue, if there is one. And they're all indicated by letters, so, and also sure. electrical engine fuses. Once again, diagrams all the fuses. We'll just hit the back button, back to the home screen, suspension. This is where things get a little bit more different on the 310 spare than all the other spares that we have. As I mentioned to you earlier before, we have manual mode, auto mode, and auto plus. Manual mode would be just strictly for lowering and raising the sprayer in a manual position without ever actually going anywhere. So it's not something that we would use very often. Um, the one thing we have to do, however, is in order to change the height of anything on here, we have to have the park brake off. So we're gonna take the park brake off. It's off now. So here I can lower the sprayer down. And you can see the suspension arm coming up or raise the spare up. So going into, um, from auto, basically what we're doing is we're gonna select the, the height at which we want. The spare will then go to that height that we ask it to go to. Auto plus is going to maintain that height ground clearance wise, but what it's going to do is it's going to roll the cab of the sprayer so that our um, boom is always flat to the ground. So it's kind of like a hillside mode in one way or another. And so that's how our suspension works. If you want to diagnose, diagnose the suspension, if you want to diagnose the suspension, just hit this middle button here and it'll give you the readouts of everything that's happening in the suspension. Back to the home screen again. Tire size. Whenever you're changing your tires, you should always select the tires that are on the sprayer at the time. This sprayer has 650, 65 R42s. If you did put a different size on that's than what is selected in here, you can select your custom tire circumference and go in there and put in the size of the tires that you're putting on. So here's our selection again, back to that. It's very important to do that because when you do your uh, planetary calibration, you need to make sure that the, cal the computer knows what size of tires are on so it understands that the, rolling the, the rolling speed of the tires and the planetary. Drive line, this is pretty simple. It's where we do our calibrations. The other thing that it's going to do, this is where we do our calibrations. The other thing it's going to do for you is actually set in your preset speeds. As we could see, there's four ranges, one, two, three, and four. Range one is set at 10 miles an hour. Range two is set at 10.8 miles an hour. Range three is set at 15.8. And range four is set at 33.8 mile, 33 miles per hour. To change range one, I just select it and decrease it or increase it. Range two, let's increase it. That's one way of setting your speeds. Also, while you're in this screen, you can do driveline calibrations, joystick, brake pedal, or your front angle steering sensor. This is where you go to turn your traction control on and off. Traction control provides even power to all four corners of the tire. So your front right and your rear left will work together, where your front left and your rear right will work together. 
You turn it off, you don't have that even power. You've just got one wheel spinning faster than the other one. That's where your drive line, drive line parts are. Didn't release the park brake pedal to propel earlier. Back to the home screen. Radio mute. I just muted the radio. Displays. This is when you get into some more technical um, settings. The only one that the operator should ever um, be involved with is operator settings. In the operator settings, you can select your cab lighting, how, how um, intense you want it. So everything here is set at 50%. You can select your unit selection, whether you want metric or imperial as it's set here. Um, section control. This would be if you wanted to, uh, well, if you're setting up your sprayer, you want to make sure you got 10 sections in there. F rear nozzle body. So these are the rear nozzles that are behind the wheel. You can have them at auto or off. A lot of guys would like to take them off when they're doing some desiccant because we don't have the kick up a chemical running into the tire tracks as much. I'm going to put it back on auto. This unit has a rear, we can get an optional rear boom for our sprayers for when you're doing uh, fungicides and corn, when your spray boom is up all the way at its maximum height, shut off the center section and you turn on the rear boom so the chemical will come out the back instead of on the windshield. In the auto rinse, what you can do here is you can actually change the time frame to which each function takes. So agitation time, it's set at 10, section, 10 seconds. We can jump it to 12. We're back, I'll put set it down to the factory setting of 10. That's pretty much all that we need to look at in the chassis monitor, but all the important information is in there. So simply when you're wanting to start your sprayer, notice that alarm comes up. Product pump won't turn on until the products, product and rinse sumps are both closed. So, we'll turn them on. You can see the, the product is coming out the main, the main tank, through the pump, down into the boom, and then out through the nozzles. But if you look at the, at the, the, the handle, you can see that our nozzle sections are turned off. So as I turn these sections on, they now go from red to yellow, which means they're turned on, but nothing is gonna spray until I hit the, spray, the master spray switch. Now these were all green before they were red. Back to red because I turned the master switch off. Back to green because the switch is on. So now we know we're spraying product at this point in time. When I want to do a rinse out, when we're done, I'm going to turn off the pump. I'm going to turn off that valve. Everything is shut off now. There's no more water coming out of here and going through the pump. I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to do an auto rinse tank. So what I'm going to do at this point in time, is I'm gonna rinse the tank out. I'm gonna do a level one, because it's the quickest one to do. And what it's going to do now, is it's going to actually rinse out the tank. As you can see here, it's rinsing out the tank, and it's showing us its progress. It's going to rinse it out three times though. So that's one of two. So we're going to turn that off. We're going to go back to here. Now we're going to do auto rinse boom. So now I'm going to rinse out the boom. It's going to do exactly the same thing. Boom pressure zero. What am I going to do? There's our thumbs up button. I'm pushing the thumbs up. Now it's bringing water out of the rinse tank. It's going to rinse out the boom. So there you can see we're getting a rinse out and it's going to do each section by section. If you see along the bottom here, it's section one is red. It's done doing section one. It's now on to section two, which is green because it's blowing out section two. And now we're doing a section three. Four. We'll get to five. When we get to five, we'll just turn it off. There, now we're at section five. So half the boom has been rinsed out. Back again to the home screen. 
I can rinse out the adductor from here, the same thing is gonna happen. And then I can also do my engine blowout, or my boom blowout, sorry, which is exactly the same thing will be done. And when I do the boom blowout, it's gonna blow out section number one. And it's gonna blow out section number two, section number three, as you can see as the progress bar goes across. So that's how simple it is to rinse out the sprayer from inside the cab of the sprayer. One thing I'd like to show you while we're in the cab here is up above on the top right screen, so our third screen, this actually shows us our RPM of the engine. And Sorry, this actually shows the RPM of the engine and the ground speed at which we're traveling at. So I know from looking at this right now, we're in, um, we were in range number four. Now we're in range number one. And the reason I know that is because range number one is white. Remember how I showed you in the monitor earlier that we can change the speeds per each range? If you look here now, that eight is now a seven, and now it's a six. So on the back of this lever, on the back of this lever, there's a toggle switch right here. And if I move that toggle switch, it will change the speed within the range that's selected. So range one is selected because it's white. I'm going to push this gear button here and move the toggle switch in an upward position at the same time. And now I've gone into range number two. I'm gonna take my finger off that gear switch and now I can go up and you can see in the monitor that I'm gonna lower range two speed to 10 miles an hour. Okay. Now we're gonna go up into range three. We have to push the, the gear button again, and we're up into range three. I'm gonna increase range three, range three speed to 18 miles an hour. So I don't have my finger on the gear switch. I just have it on the toggle switch at the back. Now we're at 17 miles an hour. Now if I go into range four, I'm gonna be traveling 33 miles an hour. Now you can see all four ranges are lit up in white. On our sprayers, one of the features we have on our sprayers is we have IntelliTurn. So what that, sorry. One of the features we have on our sprayers is IntelliTurn. So what IntelliTurn does is actually turn the sprayer at the headland. But one of the important things with IntelliTurn is to always maintain the proper speed at the, turn, at the headland. So it doesn't judge the turn off of GPS or global positioning or the position of the sprayer. It actually judges the turn off the time it takes to turn. So you may be spraying in third, in third range at 17 miles an hour, but if you take a look at the monitor, I'm going to slow down to six miles an hour when my, I'm gonna pretend that my IntelliTurn warning came up to slow down. So I'm gonna slow down to 10 miles an hour, or to, to six miles an hour, but I'm not gonna pull back on the lever. I'm just gonna push the range button down here and the toggle switch here so the range button here and the toggle switch here to slow this down to six miles an hour. I don't ever wanna pull back on the lever because if I pull back on the lever, I will not have a consistent speed. And again, to turn at the headland, we always wanna have a consistent speed. Realistically speaking, once you've started spraying, you should never have to pull back on this lever. All you would have to do is toggle between speeds. So again, watch on the display screen up there how I toggle from 17 miles an hour to six miles an hour. Push the gear button, toggle down from 17 to 10 to six. So now I'm at my toggle or my turning speed. It's as simple as that and the sprayer will slow down very easily, comfortable and but rapidly to the point where it gets to that speed quick enough. So again, I never wanna pull back on this lever. Sprayer's done its turn. Now I'm gonna go back to my spray speed. I've got two spray speeds, spray, I've got two spray speeds set up in here, 10 miles an hour and 12 miles an hour. Sorry, I've got two spray speeds set up in here, 10 miles an hour and 17 miles an hour. So I'm going to bump up to 10 first and then to 12. I may want to use the different speeds because of the different terrain I'm traveling through, or maybe the field's a little bit rough. With that being said, I don't feel there's many fields out there that are too rough for this sprayer to operate at 17 miles an hour. 
So if you watch the monitor, the display screen one more time, I'm gonna change from the turn speed at six miles an hour, made the turn, hands-free, not pulling back on the lever. Now I'm gonna jump up to 10 miles an hour. Boom, we're at 10. Now I'm gonna jump up to 17 miles an hour. You can see where this populated to 10 and then to 17. So caution to all operators out there, no need to pull back on this lever at any point in time while spraying, just toggle back and forth through your spray speeds. The other thing that shows up on this display screen is our RPMs. <coughs> of course, our engine is not running right now, but you can use the turtle and the rabbit switch, which is directly above the gear switch here, to actually adjust speeds within that RPM range that you've already at. So here, it looks like the high speed is 2000 RPM, 20, 2300 RPM, sorry. I might wanna move that back down to 19 or 18. So I'll go back to the, to the, the throttle switch, the, the rabbit and turtle, and I'll push that, and then I'll just toggle down to what that RPM is that I want it set at. So remember, never pull on that lever when you're operating your sprayer. Other thing I wanna show you right here quickly is while you're driving your sprayer, you notice everything's within easy to reach arms without having to twist and turn of your daily functions that you need while spraying. In fact, we've actually put our radio controls right here. Volume, up, down, searching for stations. You can do a manual or an input search. So all your radio controls are right here as well. We've got our wiper switch and our windshield wiper uh, fluid button. Over here is a very important button. This is to turn your auto height on and off. If you do not turn your auto height on, you will not have auto height control. It's off right now and now it's on. I'll turn it off. These are your main light switches, your hazard and your, rotate, and your warning beacons. To start the sprayer, just turn the key to the running position and push the button and the engine will start. <clears throat> when you're filling and you don't want your engine on, just push the button, it'll turn the engine off. But you don't lose any of this because you didn't power anything down. One other thing I didn't show you on this monitor is after we've got our boom, heights, boom height control switch turned on, we can go into the boom height and turn it on from here. So now, we can, so we now know that it's set at nine inches or that's where it's reading as nine inches. We don't want it at nine inches. So this is where you would turn on your auto boom height just by pushing that button, it'll adjust its height. We'll turn it off because we're not doing anything. That turns, that's your master switch to turn everything off. Then go back to your spray um, page. Just hit that button and your spray page comes back up. So now that we've shown you everything inside the cab of the sprayer, we're gonna head down to the bottom. We're gonna show you how to fill the sprayer. We're gonna walk through the boom of the sprayer and we're gonna actually show the sprayer moving up and down. Okay, so here we're at the fill station on the Guardian sprayer. Um, this unit has auto, spray, uh, auto rinse and I know that because this monitor is here, this lit up digital monitor. Um, if it did not have auto rinse, there would be a small keypad in this location here which would be just your manual rinse then. So what auto rinse gives us is the ability to do a few more things from the ground level. Um, for instance, if the engine was running, we could raise or lower the boom of the sprayer. The reason we would wanna do that is if we had, while we were spraying, if we noticed there was an issue with a, an NCV, nozzle control valve, we could then go out, raise the boom up or lower the boom to get to that nozzle control valve to go and repair or, or work with the issue that was there. Um, now, here we can raise and lower the throttle or increase and decrease the throttle. Um, this button here though is to do, where it says auto, this is the button we'll push to get into the fill cycle. So we're gonna do an auto fill, auto mode select page as you can see from there. Um, and here, this is the product tank. That's a product, filling the product tank using the onboard pump. This, of course, would be using the nurse pump off the truck. That's to fill your rinse tank. This is to clean your eductor out, which this does not have, and that's to turn on your sparge pressure from inside. So we're gonna fill this sprayer 
with the onboard tank or onboard um, pump from the truck. So we're just gonna push this button. As you can see now, the plumbing diagram shows up uh, to indicate all the pieces on the sprayer. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is you can see the little thumbs up button here. We're gonna push that button and it's gonna tell us what our next step is to fill the sprayer. So there it's gonna tell us to hook up the hose on this, um, this is your main fill hose here, the chemical hose. This one over here is your rinse tank. So we're gonna hook up the hose to this, then it tells us to open up the valve and turn on the external pump, which again is on the truck. When we're done that, we push the thumbs up button again, and you can hear the valve closing. Sorry, opening, because we're filling, my mistake. You heard the valve open because we're filling. When we're done with the filling process, we hit the thumbs up, the valve closes again, and then it tells us to do basically what we did before opposite. Fill complete, turn off pump, close this valve, unhook the hose, and we're done filling the sprayer. This is probably our most common option because of the, not only because of this filling station and this diagram and this monitor down here, but it also gives us the auto rinse, which we'll show later on in the cab. So I'm just gonna turn this off now because we're completed that cycle. I'm gonna go back to my home page. And that gives me, again, the options of what we can do here. So this again was to do the adductor, which the sprayer doesn't have anyway, so nothing is gonna light up on this, on this screen because it doesn't have an adductor. This here is if I wanted to fill the, the, the sprayer manually instead of using the auto where it copes and closes and, and literally tells us what to do as we're working through it. Um, we'll just get out of that. So that's how simple it is to, to fill the New Holland Guardian sprayer. One thing I wanna note is right here is our Raven fill meter. Um, of course, most of the plumbing on our sprayer is provided by uh, in a partnership with Raven. This um, would light up, it, it's not working today, but it would light up and it will actually tell you how many gallons of water are going into the sprayer through this hose and on the back side of the hose, right here is a 200 gallon per minute flow meter. So as it's filling in here, this flow meter is talking to that monitor to tell us how much water is going in. So, we'll go back there. so what that's going to do is, let's say you only wanna put 400 gallons uh, in the sprayer at one time or 500 gallons in the 1200 gallon sprayer, then you wanna fill your chemical afterwards so you get a good mix. Well, then you know how much is in here, then you'll know how much is going in after the fact the readout in here reads all the way back up into the monitor as well. So um, you've got that whatever it reads out here will read up on the monitor. Now, if you're not completely empty, say there's 100 or 200 gallons still left in your sprayer, it will still show what's left in the sprayer down here on the monitor. So if you wanted to fill to say 600 gallons and you've got 200 left in there, you know that you only need to put another 400 gallons in. So what it'll do actually is it'll read out the 600 gallons which it feeds to, but it'll also show you how much you put in as well. So it'll give you the two readouts. So that's realistically how to fill the chemical in the sprayer. When you're filling the fresh water tank, which is on the sitting in the cab right hand side of the sprayer, you're just basically hooking up a two inch hose here and filling directly into the, into the fresh water tank. There's real no check valve except for the fact when the water starts to spill out of the, the tank, then we know it's full. So again, a two inch valve for fresh water, three inch valve for chemical. So to use the chemi ductor to fill the chemical instead of your onboard chemical tank in your truck, you just lower the chemi ductor down from there. It's a stainless steel chemi ductor. It does have a clean out in here so you can clean out your, your um, jugs after you've emptied them. It does not have a stab knife in it, so you'll have to uh, somehow open up the jugs and put them in. And then when we turn on the adductor system, when we're cleaning, we open up this valve, the chemical then goes into the tank. It fills separately from the main, from the main chem line. So it does go through its own line and then tees into the main line to go into the tank. I'll just raise it up now out of the way. And then I'll raise this up because this gets up. We want to have this up when we're spraying, of course. There is an alarm inside that will tell you that this is down. 
So now we've got the sprayer filled. It's got chemical, it's got fresh water in it to rinse off afterwards. We're just gonna take a look down the boom line now. So on our sprayer uh, with our IntelliSpray, if you can zoom into that logo up there. And the IntelliSpray on our sprayer uses a nozzle control valve um, on every nozzle body. This is a 120 foot boom, so it'll have 81 nozzle bodies on it. What this does is it pulses, works in conjunction with this, but at opposite times. So when this one is pulsing, this one is not pulsing and vice versa. When this one's pulsing, this one isn't. So what that does is it gives us even coverage on the, on the, uh, the, the spray job that we're trying to do. But what it also does is it allows us to utilize essentially one spray tip for the majority of your spraying. Um, the key to that though is to make sure that that tip runs in within 62 to 75 percent of duty cycle um, when that tip fits into that that duty cycle ratio or percentage then you know you're running with your right tip for that chemical so if you're trying to run at 18 miles an hour and spray five gallons per acre you want to make sure that that tip that you've chosen is probably going to be an 05 is going to fit into that 60 to 75 percent duty cycle that way you've got room to move upwards and room to move downwards so you're always getting your full coverage so that's what the monitor or what these nozzle bodies are going to do is they're going to control. So what it's going to do is it's going to lock in your rate at the rate that you've designated to have, plus it'll lock in your pressure. So no matter what your speed is, your rate and your pressure will stay constant. Typical rate controller will adjust the pressure upwards and downwards to maintain your rate as your speed increases and decreases. So this goes opposite to that direction where it's going to lock in your rate and your pressure no matter what speed you run. Typically at about an 8 to 1 ratio, so if you can spray with that tip, get that rate and get that coverage at 24 miles an hour, you can go with that same setup as low as 3 miles an hour. So inside the monitor, when we get inside the cab, you're going to see a little bit more action going on in the monitor. But if we had a fault in this NCV, nozzle control valve, let's say the poppet inside here is stuck, which happens a lot when we're using granular mixes. Um, it's going to tell you exactly which one of these is stuck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to fix that stick or that part that's stuck on that poppet. The first thing I'm going to ask you not to do is do not unplug the NCV. If you unplug the NCV, then you have to go and re essentially recalibrate your boom and your NCVs. And the way it calibrates is from the middle to the outside. So it starts in the middle and works its way to the outside. So if it's this one that you didn't do right, it's not as big a deal, but obviously if we get to the outside, it's gonna take longer to get that calibrated. So all you wanna do is just unscrew the NCV, which is still connected to the wire. Again, that's the key thing. The other thing that I should show you here is if there's a fault, this light is shining green right now, but if there is a fault, it will shine red. So. Yes, it tells you inside the cab which one it is that's, that's faulty, but you may have lost your count or it's hard to count which one it is. Not a big deal, just look for the one that's red. So at that point in time, essentially what I wanna do is I wanna break this off of there in order to get this cap off. With your new sprayer, you get this kit. It has got a Raven part number on it, but within the kit, inside the kit, you're gonna need to get a bunch of goodies. Um, an extra NCV, for instance, um, extra caps and poppets, and a tool to take everything apart. So if you have a poppet that's broken, you can go into the kit that comes with the sprayer, and this is the poppet that we're looking for. Essentially, it could be damaged, and it could just have some granular um, granular product stuck in there that's helping that's uh, not allowing it to bounce back and forth with the spring that's on there the electric uh, current coming from the solenoid gets this puppet to bounce inside of the nozzle body or the nozzle or the ncv and so that spring can sometimes get get um, broken sometimes there can be some product caught in there which is not allowing it to do its full cycle inside the kit comes a little socket it's basically a spanner wrench that's going to go on the end of that nozzle body, put it on a small ratchet, put the kit. you can see the four holes right there that I'm going to aim for. 
Ah, right. Take the O-ring off first. Okay, and then just turn it. There we go. Loosen it off. And there's your poppet right there that I told you could be the problem. The spring may be faulty. There could be some particles caught in there and there could be some particles caught here. Let's take it apart, blow it out, clean it out, put it back in. And then you can see the backside, there could be some product caught in there as well. Blow it out. Uh, obviously, if you're using some more toxic chemicals, you wanna be a little bit careful about how you handle this. And then just um, thread it back on. So we'll just uh, put it back on, tighten it up, make sure that the O-rings are sealed. O-rings back on, so O-ring missing from there. Now you can see, you can dangle it, dangle it, but you wanna make sure that we're not stressing this wire out. We don't wanna put any extra strain on this wire. The wire could crack inside that, that insulation and we would never know that there was a crack there, which would send us a different fault, of course. There we go, back in business. Green light, we're good to go. One thing we did with the 310 sprayer is we cleaned up all the plumbing, all the nozzle gauges and everything that used to be under here now. We've just got this door that folds open here and all of our solenoids for our, electron, or for our hydraulic bank are right here. Uh, our two main valves that shut off the difference between section five and section six are located right there. Easy, cleaned up, hides out of the way. Nice uh, fiberglass cover, just cover it up. We're good. And we work our way down here. If you need yourself to go higher, uh, maybe you're working in some terraces or some valleys or something like that where you need this boom to be higher than what we allow, you can take these cylinder stops out. They're just a spring-loaded cylinder stop. They pop off, take it off, and it'll give you more height. The reason why we have them set the way they are right now is when you're racking the boom or folding the boom up, it won't go up too high. We don't want it to go up too high and forget to bring it down. So if you do take these out, be cautious of when you're racking your sprayer boom in. So we work our way down. You can see we do have our valves and our filters in conjunction all the way down the sprayer boom. This is a 10 section boom which means that 120 foot boom, we've got 12 foot sections. So mechanically it is a 10 section boom. Stainless steel tubing. And we do have shutoff valves on the ends of each boom. One thing to note is that our shutoff valves and our nozzle body position is right at the end. There's no gap between the last nozzle body and the shutoff valve. So when you're doing your clean out, you're getting pretty positive clean out here that you're not having any chemicals left inside here. Um, which when obviously when you go to use the, the clean out valve, after you've cleaned it out, there wouldn't be a lot of product left in here. It's got an ultrasonic readout that will read the, 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 the land below, the crop below, and it'll keep the boom at the height that you've designated inside the cab of the sprayer. Um, You'll note though that some of, the, some of the sensors are not the same height, noting that this one is actually lower than that one is there. So when you're calibrating and setting up your sprayer, you've gotta measure this, get the boom out level. A nice concrete floor like this would be perfect so you can measure the height so you, now you know what the height differential is between this sensor and that sensor for when you're doing your calibrations and when you're actually doing your height settings in the field. We're walking our way down here. You'll notice these torsion bars. There's one here and there's one right on the inside of the main boom. So this is the outer boom and that's the main or inner boom. And all these are here for is to help prevent the spray boom from twisting or breaking. Now this is our mono boom. We also offer a truss boom, which is more like a traditional boom on a sprayer. The mono boom is exclusive to New Holland and the Guardian sprayer. And it is essentially, as you can see, one tube of steel that runs the full length of the boom. So it's a mono meaning one. What that gives us is uh, 
really good protection for the nozzle bodies in behind, number one. Number two, we've got less metal hanging out here, so your visibility, especially when the boom is racked up in the sprayer, is better for road transport. So moving down here a little bit more, you can see now we've gone into the breakaway at the end of the boom. And this boom has actually got the sensor put out onto the breakaway, which is probably a better position for it than where it normally is, because this is the outer part of the boom. Albeit, yes, this is going to break away and go up, so it may change the height on the sensor, but it's only gonna be for a momentary time. It will, as you saw, it broke up and broke back down again. It will come down quick enough so it won't have your boom jumping all over the place. Plus, you've got that other boom on the main boom, or the other sensor on the main boom, sorry. Also, we have a touchdown wheel here. This is just a simple little caster wheel that's just bolted to the outside edge of the boom. Um, now, come in behind our boom here, and you can see how well, because you could hardly see the nozzle bodies from the other side, but you can see how well the nozzle bodies are protected from the boom and any obstacles that it may hit. There's our fence roll nozzle, and our main, these are our main uh, nozzle bodies. So our NCV or our uh, IntelliSpray nozzle runs off the inner body, and then this outer body is a manual body. So if you do have a, a, an issue with your NCV that it's not working and you don't have a spare one, you can turn this NCV off or turn this nozzle control valve off, and then you can turn on your manual body and still continue spraying even though you're not spraying through the pulse width modulated system. So that will never get you down when you're spraying in the field, whether your NCV is, is faulty and you don't have a, an extra one. So moving our way down the boom here a little bit more. Um, here's a better picture of the, of the clean out valves that I was talking about. Again, that distance between the last nozzle body and the, and the end of the boom is important because if this nozzle body was back here, you would have you know, a foot of space between here and here that you're gonna get a dead zone or chemical caught in. So we'll just head on to the back end of the sprayer now. Not going off One thing that we've way. changed on our sprayers starting in 2016 um, was we went to a planetary drive on all of our sprayers moving forward. Um, it's, it's a very uh, industry standard of a planetary. It allows the wheel to be set onto the planetary. So inside the planetary, when we come around the other side, the planetary is driven by a hydraulic motor. Oh, good job. The planetary is driven by a hydraulic motor, which is inside this frame casing here on the suspension casing. So the hydraulic motor then, an angled hydraulic motor then powers the planetary. Uh, it just gives us a lot more positive traction. It eliminates any kind of issues we may have with wheel motors, which we've had in the past, but we've worked our way past that into this planetary. So we're gonna move over in here to this. This is the SP310F New Holland Guardian sprayer. And it has a different suspension than our other class four spurs. So again, this is a class three SP310F. And we have our class fours, which is an SP, SP370F and an SP410F. They've got the older traditional New Holland sp suspension, where this is our new suspension that we came out with in 2018. So essentially what happens is, we've still got our two hydraulic cylinders going on here. But if you look closely through here, you'll see a manifold bank going in here and maybe just whip around to the other side. And then on the other, and on the other side, the back side here, we have this panel off so we can show you the electronic solenoids that control the suspension, the hydraulic control or the hydraulic flow going to the cylinders for the suspension. What that allows us to do is actually from inside the cab of the sprayer, select the height of the sprayer between 76, 72 inches to 70 inches, eight inches of crop clearance. It also allows us to have three modes of suspension, standard, auto, and auto plus, which we'll get to when we go through the monitor inside the cab. One thing I'd like to point out, this is 78 inches of crop clearance. I'm six foot seven, so I can now walk underneath this sprayer easily to get to anything that I need to get to. Um, all our valving, our plumbing, everything is right here, but it's easy for me to get to. So, 
for a shorter person, not a big deal. We'll just lower the sprayer down to either 72 inches or we can actually lower again to our trucking height, if you want to call it that, where it gets down to about 60 inches. So it, it's really easy for everybody to work on. Pausing. So just going through the plumbing really quick here, we've got our main hydraulic controlled spray pump which follows, which again, the main water comes into through the pump and up into the main tank, but then the pump pulls out of the main tank and out through the main supply line that goes out through here, out to the main boom. So this is our main supply line going to the boom to get to all the sections in the sprayer. We're gonna move to the back now. So one of the negatives of having this spare at 78 inches is now our ladder is about two feet off the ground. So if you do have it raised up for spraying height, when you get out, lower the sprayer back to either to 72 inches or as we call it, dump the suspension so that it flattens it right out. If you dump the suspension, this bottom ladder will probably touch the ground at that point. This ladder does go up and down as soon as the park brake is released so that it's not dragging in the ground as you're spraying through the field. Thanks for watching my presentation on the New Holland Guardian sprayer. Hope you enjoyed. If you've got any questions, please feel free to direct them accordingly.